Oh, here we go again. Another series. Cheating the integrity of a top 10 games list. Look, you whiny little babies. Let me explain and then have your opinions, okay? Yes, it's a series, but come on, how can you only put one in a huge game series of stories? You can't fully appreciate and love Dragon Age Inquisition without playing the previous two. Dragon Age whets my appetite on nearly every aspect. The stories, the characters, the setting. Those are my bread and butter. I love the feel and the battle mechanics. I happily replayed these games recently and they still hold up. But Dean, this is EA and EA is AIDS. Shut up you simple minded clown shoe. Yes, it's published by EA and everyone hates them. Fine. Granted, but I don't care who distributes games, I only care for the games, and Dragon Age is fantastic. The story is that well written that I genuinely loved and cared for the characters. Liliana, will you be my valentine? Dean, what the fu- The graphics kept improving to which Inquisition still looks amazing to this day, and that game is now 5 years old, and in gaming years, that basically makes you a dinosaur. It is a huge RPG series. Each game took me around 80 to 150 hours to fully complete. So convincing people to play these games can be a hard one, especially if you have a job and kids to look after. But it is seriously one of the most enjoyable games I've ever experienced. Grinding isn't really a thing, therefore it keeps the momentum going and the story fresh in your head. The personal quests for your teammates are easily the best and most interesting parts of the game, other than the main quest line. So all in all, I just love Dragon Age to death. Nothing about Bioware or EA can make me hate these games, and when Dragon Age 4 The Dread Wolf Rises gets released, please believe I'll be buying it. Please Bioware, don't mess this up. Sweet Jesus, tell me about a game that came out of nowhere and sucker punched me in the face. I knew nothing about the Witcher franchise since I wasn't a PC gamer, but when this game released on PS4 and everyone was going on about how mind-blowingly amazing it is, I quietly looked in from the windows watching others play it, wondering why this game was generating so much buzz. I had no preconceived notions for or against it, so being honest, that's a very good position to be in. If the game sucked, it wouldn't burn as much as a beloved game franchise releasing a shitty game. Please Bioware, please! But if the game rocked, then it was a pleasant surprise. And oh boy, was it a pleasant surprise. This game, this bloody game is amazing. It had everything I love about modern RPGs. The story, the characters, the missions. The graphics are some of the most beautiful graphics I've ever seen. The music is mesmerizing and above and beyond all else, the game felt alive. Whilst the combat was a little meh at times, the quests were not to be sniffed at at all. The story missions are fascinating and gripping, but even the optional side quests are equally mind-blowing. Seriously, one of the best missions I have ever had the pleasure of playing isn't even a main quest. The fact that there are people out there who have completed The Witcher 3 and never experienced the Family Matters mission is astonishing. If I was a game dev, I'd have made this mission mandatory, as it's so sad and heart-wrenching, but it's also refreshing that they didn't throw this down our throats. I love you CD Projekt Red, and thanks for making this game so awesome and rewarding. And yes, I watch YouTube videos of people playing The Witcher 1 and 2, because I suck at PC gaming. The Witcher 3 gets the number 4 spot.
Whilst I am tempted to put up all the Borderland games in the number 3 spot, I just need to be real here and say that Borderlands 2 is the better game from all three so far. Borderlands introduced everyone to this new genre of game, the looter shooter. Many games have tried to replicate this genre, Destiny, Division and Anthem to name a few, but all have utterly failed to deliver the important part, the loot. Listen game devs, if you're going to call your game a looter shooter, you better have the damn loot. Borderlands advertises we have billions of guns, and that's difficult to argue against when you beat a boss that literally spits out 30 to 100 pieces of equipment. Borderlands 2 is everything you liked about Borderlands 1 and the pre-sequel, but done better basically. The characters are cooler, the humour is much more defined, the DLCs are wonderful and worth every penny at the time. My pal Jobin's favourite character is Mr Torque, who is an incredibly funny NPC with such quotable lines as I probably should have set you up with the sponsor beforehand, but I'm fucking disorganised as shit and was busy suplexing a shark wearing a bolo tie when I should have been setting up sponsors. You may ask, who was wearing the bolo tie? You were the shark. Answer, yes. Of course, my favourite character in all of Borderlands is not Jack. I gotcha. Yes, Handsome Jack is genuinely one of the funniest guys ever in a video game, and one of the best villains ever. His one-liners are hilarious and is incredibly quotable, but for me, the title of Best Bland's character goes to... Tiny Tina. Tina won me immediately over as soon as I clamped eyes on her for the first time, with her crazy stare, her funny as hell missions, and the fact she says badonka donks. That's mushy snuggle bites badonka donk. She's my main squeeze. Lady's got a gut full of dynamite and a booty like pow. And burn all the babies. <laughs> burn all the babies! Had me in stitches. She's a 13 year old explosive expert. When. And her best role is being the narrator for the DLC. Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon's Keep. Epic hilarity. Borderlands 2 is simply the best FPS game I've ever played and is nothing but entertainment from start to finish. Story might be a little bit weak, but with the cast of characters the Borderlands universe has, there is no downtime or fillers. It's 100% hilarity. If you like first person shooters and have a sense of humour, this game is for you. The Borderlands series is one of my all time favourites and Bland's 2 deservedly takes the number 3 spot. Zelda Ocarina of Time, whilst being a groundbreaking game for the N64 at the time, to me it has not lasted the test of time, graphically or gameplay wise. At the time it probably was my favourite game of all time, since it broke a lot of barriers on games and set new standards on how action RPG should be. But as the years have increased, my love for Zelda 64 has decreased, whereas A Link to the Past has maintained its place as a game that still looks and plays flawlessly. Rewarding curiosity, secrets galore, abilities that make the game incredibly fun to play and is never frustrating. You never feel cheated, if you mess up it's because you messed up. It's not because of the dodgy camera or a stupid outy camera hit, it's because you simply fucked up. Even the use of weapons to beat bosses are better used in A Link to the Past. A weapon you picked up 4 dungeons ago can still be used with great effect on your upcoming battle, whereas every new Zelda now is incredibly guilty of, oh, I got a bow and arrow, I wonder what weapon I need to use to kill this upcoming boss. 
Link to the past rewards your skill and ingenuity. If you want to plow it with your new weapon, you're welcome to. But you can also use the weapons three or four dungeons ago and really whoop its ass. Zelda A Link to the Past to me has aged like fine wine. It was my number one game of all time for many, many years. The graphics are still amazing, the music is still wonderful, and the fact that A Link to the Past maintained five consecutive years in the number one spot as top games on Nintendo Power is a testament of this game's amazingness. I play this game religiously every year, and I never bore of it. Ever. It's just such a fun game to play, and that's the key word, fun. It's the funnest game I've ever had the pleasure of playing, and I will never not love it. I think the day I die, this game will never drop any lower than number two on my all-time favourite games. In fact, it may even crawl back up to number one, depending on how the next few years treat this next game. Zelda, A Link to the Past, will forever hold a special, special place in my heart. Oh. oh, an email from a body double. Let's see. Dear stupid idiot Dean, if you're reading this, it means you have done something so stupid that this email has been automatically sent to you. You've said something incredibly blasphemous to gamers all around the world. Not only have you insulted us, but you've done double damage of mistakes. Mistake number one, you have dared to put a Zelda game anything less than number one on your stupid list. Mistake number two, you haven't put Zelda Ocarina of Time as your favourite Zelda game. How dare you? As your stuntman slash cameraman slash body double and part-time alien news reporter, I can no longer support you or your stupid show. Goodbye. P.S. Don't look behind you or you will die. Sit down. Look, before y'all crucify me, let me get this out of the way. I know Bioware and EA are currently being cancerous as all hell. At least management wise, not the talented people doing the grunt work at Bioware. They rock. I am well aware that EA and recently Bioware are incredibly unpopular companies to like at the moment. But I'm sorry, I just love Mass Effect so much. This goes back to my earlier statement on Dragon Age, that I only care for the game, and Mass Effect genuinely touched me in areas that I thought only possible by Michael Jackson. <laughs> With his music. Oh come on people, get your head out of the gutter, huh? Hee <laughs> Mass Effect overtook my life. I can't even explain how much I love this game. Is there games with better mechanics, better graphics, and better gameplay? Well, yeah, but it's not like the graphics or gameplay are bad in these games either though. But the one thing I will maintain that this game has better than any other game out there, and that's story. Story to me is the most important thing in a game, it's the reason why I can't get into games like Dark Souls or Monster Hunter, because nothing brings me back. Nothing keeps me wanting to play a game to just keep dying. Is that shallow? Maybe, but that's the beauty of preferences and difference of opinions. Wouldn't the world be a lot more boring if we all loved and hated the exact same things? Mass Effect 1, 2 and 3 had me gripped so tightly that I allowed a game to consume my life. Probably unhealthily, but I don't regret it for a second. 
Not only would I do it all over again, but I did just recently play all the games again on Xbox One X, including Mass Effect Andromeda. And guess what? Love them all still. Andromeda is the black sheep of the series for sure, and the weakest game in the Mass Effect universe, but is it as bad as everyone makes it out to be? Absolutely not. But we're not here to talk about Andromeda, so back on topic. The sense of joy and wonder all flooded back, like running head first into a brick wall. I literally suffered whiplash at the sheer amount of fun I had replaying these games. I loved these games so much, I even watched my baby sister play through all the Mass Effect games just to see how she'd play it out. A lot of long ass nights and toadies consumed, eh Miri? I love all the characters, I love the gameplay, I love the DLCs, I was captured by everything in it. The lore is wonderfully detailed and rich with history, backstories with all these different alien races and why they are either friends or foes. The politics has crazy amount of depth for a game and a joy to read and hear other people's conversations that don't even involve you at all. And that's before we even talk about the game. The Mass Effect games are third person hidden shooters, but it's everything that happens around you or the consequences because of your actions is the game's strength. Bioware are amazing at creating atmosphere, and this game reeks of it. Dragon Age has a similar atmosphere feel to it, but Mass Effect surpasses it with its interesting characters and everyone's story arcs. I love the idea of Ashley being hesitant towards the alien races and not trusting them at all. She's not xenophobe, but probably could be pushed towards hating them. It's complex characters with complex backgrounds. They're not just one-dimensional people. You feel their pain, their anger, their frustration, and their happiness. Even the elusive man isn't just evil because of villain sakes. He's fighting to better humanity in his own sadistic way. You want to find out more and talk to every non-playable character to see what's going on. You, Commander Shepard, are there to basically build relations and unite all the races through missions, loyalty quests, and just generally being a badass. I loved how Mass Effect 1 made Siren out as the big bad guy, and then BOOM! He was just a baby compared to what was coming next. But it's impossible to talk about the Mass Effect trilogy without mentioning the controversial ending. It's been done to death, so here's my take. I wasn't expecting Michael Bay explosions to give me a happy ending, and I certainly wasn't expecting mega different endings either. I like the sombre quiet ending, it's very emotional with very powerful and moving music. But do I understand why people got upset though? Of course I do. People felt tricked that their entire playthrough was meaningless because all the endings felt the same. But really, could any ending please everyone? You can't even get people to agree on something simple nowadays, like how to pronounce GIF. It's GIF, by the way. It stands for Graphics Interchange Format, not Graphics. You're welcome, Internet. So with all that said, the Mass Effect trilogy takes the number one spot on my all-time favourite games list as of April 2019. Hey guys, Whew, that was a long one, sorry about that. It honestly wasn't meant to go that long, but once I got started writing about my favourite games, I couldn't stop. I promise the next one will be a lot shorter. Thanks for your continued support and your kind words, and if you could hit that subscribe button, it'd greatly help. But until next time, be good to each other and have a nice day.